Good morning and welcome to worship with Trinity Lutheran Church here in Boulder, Colorado on this first Sunday in the season of Lent. We're so glad that you're joining us for worship this morning as we come together at the beginning of our Lenten pilgrimage. We come together in worship, in prayer, across the distance, trusting that God is present with us in this time of worship across the distance. Welcome. Let us begin worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close to Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion and confession. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Forgive our sins, both those things we have done and left undone. Wash us in your cleansing flood of baptismal grace. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This is hymn 325, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me.
The first reading is from the 25th Psalm, verses 1 through 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all my days. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, your steadfast love and faithfulness, and those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be with you all through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Have you ever started watching a movie or maybe a TV series and you think that you're missing a few of the important details? Sometimes in early on, people are having conversations referencing something that supposedly happened in the past or you even get a glimpse of it happening in the moment but you don't get many details and suddenly the storyline moves on and you're thinking that seemed awfully important, but they never come back to it. It's a bit what it feels like here in our gospel reading today. Baptism, temptation, the arrest of John, just 15 verses into the book and we're off and running. Now, it's amazing how much can be packed into a very short passage of Scripture, important stuff even, and yet with very few details. Our Scripture reading here from the Gospel of Mark is a good summary of the cadence and the focus Mark's unique Gospel account has for us. For Mark, there is no time to waste. Things are often described throughout the book as happening immediately, back to back. You get the gist of the story and it's time to move on to the next thing. There's no time to linger. There's important stuff on the way. The kingdom of God is near. We've got to get to it. Now, this coming Wednesday, after we start our headbutting with God in the Wilderness Midweek Lenten series, we'll get a more elaborate account of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness from the Gospel of Matthew. In that Gospel account, there will be specific instances of temptation for Jesus, some relatable, most of them pretty specific to Jesus' particular predicament. But here, without the details and the fanfare, we get a different kind of account. Now, it's hard for us to remember that we don't really have all of the details when reading the Gospel of Mark by itself. And of course, it's important to look to the other Gospels. But the story that Mark is telling here does not have those details that we find elsewhere. And that's part of the story that Mark is constructing to give to his listeners. 
Now, this helps set the stage for everything else that Jesus will do in the story to come. Mark thought it was important to include even reference to these things. It gives a bit of a back plot that might help match up with the outline of our lives without getting lost in the details. So then we can hear of the good news to come in the rest of this gospel. There's something powerful in this sequence of events. Jesus enters the scene and is baptized right away. And as he is coming up out of the water, the heavens open up. They're literally torn apart. And a voice from heaven says, speaking directly to Jesus, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. It seems to be the perfect start for a fantastic, charmed ministry. One, we'd assume, would go smoothly, at least to start. But as soon as we start to wonder what that means, we don't have any chance to really think about the details because Jesus is whisked away by the Spirit, not to some cushy life, but to go in the wilderness where he's tempted or tested for 40 days, surrounded by wild animals, yet also waited on by angels. And then John is arrested, and suddenly Jesus is out of the wilderness and is proclaiming the good news. Hold up. Wait a minute. You can't just say that Jesus was tempted in the wilderness for 40 days with wild beasts and angels all around him and then move on as if that's not noteworthy. And yet, don't we often try to do the same thing? Rush by the trying events? Maybe we note them quickly, but without much detail. We don't want to bog anyone down. It's better to just move on, to keep going. Forty days is a long time to be in the wilderness, surrounded by wild beasts, without giving any detail. Things or thoughts lurking in the shadows that capture our attention and imagination in troubling ways fill that space. We've all been there in one way or another. Prolonged times of frustration, fear, anxiety, depression, family conflicts that leave us feeling isolated or alone, unemployment that threatens our own sense of purpose, addiction, grief, physical illnesses that consume our thoughts and our energy and often leave us in physical and emotional pain. Those wilderness experiences are often things that we want to gloss over, to suggest that they're minor details, particularly when we get past them. Let's not dwell on that. Sometimes we may even believe, whether we know we believed it or not, that as faithful people, as baptized members of the body of Christ, we shouldn't have to deal with this stuff. And if we are, we shouldn't give in to the struggle. After all, Jesus resisted the temptation to give in to it all. It's a prevalent response to this story. And yet again, even if you don't consciously believe that that should be true or that it even makes sense, in times of stress, you may be surprised to find out that something inside of you tells you that it's your fault that you're in misery. Something, a little voice whispers that if only you were something else, this wouldn't be happening. You may be tempted to believe those thoughts that run through your head that suggest if only you were a better friend, a better spouse, a better student or worker, a better Christian. If only you were really beloved by God, this wouldn't be happening. And yet, here Jesus is, freshly baptized, named and claimed by God, out in the wilderness, tempted by Satan. 
tempted to believe all that God said about him, all about who he was, was not true. And here Jesus is with so much more still to come in the story. Through it all, Jesus was not truly alone. The angels, were told, waited on him. Again, throw that tidbit in there and move on as if that's a minor detail and something that we acknowledge every day. But those angels carry him through. And it's not a minor detail. That help, that care, carries us through the wilderness too. In the midst of all that can be wrong in the world, when we doubt ourselves, when we doubt that we are loved or lovable, when we feel all alone, the care and compassion of just one person can give us the strength we need to carry on. You know the experience. That time someone sent you a card simply to say that you were on their mind when you felt utterly alone. The hug from a toddler who could tell something isn't right and they know that your hugs always make them feel better. The person who drives you to your doctor's appointment, holds open the door for you when your hands are full, brings their generator over when you've lost power, or genuinely compliments you on a day when you feel like you're falling apart. The person who shows you God's love by seeing you as you are, even when you may not be able to see it yourself. Even when you may want to rush past that day and move on because you're afraid to stop and recognize that it just may break you. And yet, in someone else recognizing your pain, you get a surprise. It helps carry you through, even if it doesn't fix it. Even if you're not sure where you are in that 40-day wilderness journey, it becomes a bit more bearable to carry on. Now see, the point of our gospel reading today isn't to say Jesus made it through trials and tribulations, so you can too, just move on. It's to remind us that even in all that is to come in the gospel account, Jesus has both baptism and trials as his backdrop too. The circumstances may be different, they're likely very different, but the experience of being in that wilderness space has to be named. These experiences are part of our lives and it was part of Jesus too. The promises of baptism remind us and assure us of God's love for us, whether we're in the wilderness alone or we find ourselves accompanying someone else on that journey. The love, the pain, the fear and comfort, it's our Lenten journey, our Christian and baptismal story that reminds us who we are and where we've been and then points us forward to where and how we're headed forward. It's a journey and a time Jesus knows and says there is good news to come. The kingdom of God has come near, is near, is making all things new. Repent, turn away from everything that tries to tell you otherwise. Turn away from the lies that tell you you're not pretty enough, smart enough, strong or faithful enough to be loved, to be carried through the wilderness. Repent, turn away from those voices and believe in the good news that God has already named and claimed you as beloved, sealed you with the Holy Spirit and marked you with the cross of Christ forever. It's part of our story, part of Jesus' story, part of God's story and our world's story. And it is not the end. 
All men. The hymn is 319, O Lord, throughout these 40 days. With the whole church on earth, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. May Christ's peace surround you in this Lenten pilgrimage. If you are joining us on Zoom, you're invited to greet each other in whatever way seems appropriate in this day and age when we're joining online. Uh, waving to each other is great. Uh, typing a message of greeting and peace to the others in the chat. Um, embracing those who might be with you in your home. And also, you're always encouraged to reach out to others throughout this week to remind them that they are not alone and to share Christ's peace with them as well. So Christ's peace be with you. And if you are joining us on YouTube or on Facebook, again, hear these words said to you. May Christ's peace be in your life, surrounding you and your family and friends. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we now boldly pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Loving and compassionate God, in Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Inspire us to be good stewards of the world you have entrusted into our care. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community, nation, and throughout the world, that they may work toward and maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit this day, especially all those struggling with the effects of the coronavirus. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern, especially the Stephen ministers. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now give thanks for all of the ways that you continue to support the ministries of the congregation with your time, talents, and financial giving. We give thanks for all of the ways that you have responded to God's spirit of generosity. And in thanksgiving, let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this world that our gifts may be used to build up your kingdom and share the hope of the gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now this blessing. You are what God created you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.